Hey guys, Ivan here and welcome to another video. In this video, we're gonna be talking about a couple of very interesting things that happen in bodybuilding. We're gonna start with this one. So we got new Mr. Olympia qualification rules for the next year for 2023. So it was shared on the IIBB Pro League Instagram page and NPC News Online. It is on their official website. What does this mean exactly? So as you can see, it says the following competitors will qualify for the 2023 Olympia and they say top five from the Mr. Olympia, top three from other divisions and winner of each contest held during the qualification period which starts on November 21st and ends on October 9, 2023. Do you notice what is missing? Where are the points? No more points, no more qualifications based on points. That thing is gone. So athletes, bodybuilders, professional bodybuilders will not receive any points based on their shows. It is going to be much simpler from now on. Only the winners of the pro shows will be qualified for the Mr. Olympia. I don't think this is a major change because how many guys did really qualify for the Mr. Olympia based on points? I mean, three? Was that the limit? Something like that? And yeah, maybe it's gonna change the way the guys think because some of them uh, might realize they can't win a show, but they can get a couple of second spots or third spots and they will get the qualification based on points. So they used to compete more, but now they will not because the only way to qualify for the Mr. Olympia is to win a show. And if they don't think they are good enough to win, they probably won't compete as often, which is probably a good thing for the athletes in terms of getting their health in check. Like, for example, Andrea Muzi. I mean, this guy did like 15 shows this year. So it means he was on gear all year. He was blasting it. And he probably ruined his health this year. It's a miracle that this guy is still alive, really. So for guys like that, this is... I guess a good thing, maybe they won't be too happy, they have to change their plans, but overall, uh, big picture wise, I think it's a good thing for them, and as far as the Mr. Olympia, we will have a few less competitors, which I think is a good thing, there probably were a little bit too many guys in the open, but I don't think it's the open that is a problem, maybe there should be like 5 or 10 guys less, the problem is classic physique. That's something that should really be changed. There was 60 competitors, guys. 60. That, that's ridiculous. That's way too many. I'm not sure how it works. Uh, do these guys get qualified on points? And how many of them get qualified on points? I'm not really sure about that. But if this is gonna change that, then awesome. Because that needs to be changed. 60 competitors on classic stage. That's 30 competitors too many, if you ask me. So I wish that would be downsized to like 30 competitors. Open Olympia, the same, I think 30 guys, around 30 guys is fine, I don't think it's too many, if you ask me, I like the fact that we had like 4 or 5 callouts this year, and as far as men's physique or other divisions, female divisions, I don't care, let it be 100, 200, 1000 competitors, I don't really care, as long as it's on a separate day, so we don't have to wait for 6 hours to watch what we came to watch, anyways, no more points, this is a new rule, I don't think it's a big change, but I do think it's a good change, if you guys think otherwise, or whatever you think, tell me down below in the comment section. The next thing I wanted to talk about is Hunter Labrada, who just made a post, pretty much explaining what happened to him at the Mr. Olympia stage, why he dropped down three places, he also talks about his new coach, Ben Chow, who was preparing him for this year's Mr. Olympia, and whether or not these guys are gonna keep working together, and I think I did a video about all of these guys that failed with the placement at the Mr. Olympia, Hunter Labrada is probably the last one, so in this post, he says, lessons learned, not mistakes made. He says, this year, Olympia was my 10th bodybuilding show ever. I've competed five times as an amateur and five times as a professional, not saying that as an excuse or to brag, just stating a fact. During those 10 shows, over a seven year span, my stage weight has gone from 218 pounds to 261 pounds. Uh, he is bragging, obviously, but let's continue. He says, couple the low show count with the large increases in stage weight. Basically, he's trying to tell us that because he wasn't competing that often during the year because he was qualified for the Mr. Olympia, actually, he didn't compete at all, and he increased his weight, those two things combined made it harder for him to peak properly. 
He says it made every prep very different, the past Olympia prep being no exception to that. Then he continues to say, going back to the phrase I started this post with, I learned more about my body and peaking in this prep. I was not satisfied with the way I looked on stage this year and I know a lot of you weren't either. That's right, we weren't. But the brass tacks of it is, that is the leanest I've ever been. I don't know about that. And the biggest I've ever been. It didn't really look like that. In other words, my current best. Uh, I'm not so sure. Do I believe it's my full potential or my best possible look? Absolutely not. That I agree with. So Hunter believes that this was his best yet. That he was the biggest he ever was. That he was the leanest he ever was. And he still placed three places lower this year. Was it really that a competition was that much tougher? I mean, there were no new guys in that top seven. He was beaten by the previous year's competitors. Only Derek Lansford was new in that mix. Everybody else was there last year. Only he was beaten this year by Nick Walker and Samson Dauda. Samson obviously made a lot of progress, but Nick Walker... I don't think he progressed that much. Sure, he was better and bigger. I don't think he was more conditioned than last year. He was probably less conditioned. So if Hunter really made that progress that he's claiming that he made, I think he would have placed higher. But I don't think it's true what he's saying. Maybe his weight has went up. But I don't think this was his best combination of conditioning and size. Maybe there is something that he saw like a day before and then he completely made a mistake with peaking. And that's why we didn't witness what he's explaining to us on the stage. I'm not sure about that. If we see any photos, I can make a judgment. But as for now, I don't think this is his best conditioning. And I don't, I don't really see the size improvements. I think his back was probably worse than last year. Maybe just a picking mistake, but I don't know. I only know what I see. Hunter continues this post by saying this was a squat like Chao, which is Ben Chao, his new coach, and his first full off season and prep together. And I'm looking forward to another off season's worth of work. We have the growing part figured out, maybe, I don't know, and then a prep with the lessons we have under our belt from this one. I hope, I really hope next year they will figure it out, I hope they actually learned from the mistakes, I hope Brand Chow is worthy of preparing this level of an Olympia caliber. I love Ben Chow, I love Fuad's podcast, Ben is one of my favorite guys from the podcast, but really, if I was Hunter, I would hire somebody with more experience. Being on that level, I wouldn't be experimenting, but that's just me, maybe Hunter likes Ben's approach, maybe he has a lot of freedom, maybe somebody who is more experienced and older would be like my way or highway, and Hunter likes to do things a little bit by, you know, in his own way, by his own rules. And he doesn't want somebody who is like really an authority to be over him. He wants somebody who, who he can agree with. I don't know. I would like to hear more about this uh, dynamic between these two guys. But as you can see, Hunter says he's going to be continuing working with Ben Chow in the next off season And next year on the Mr. Olympia, they're going to have a second try. I hope that one is going to be more successful than this one. Because this one... I don't think it was good. I don't think Hunter brought his absolute best, as he says, as Ben Chow also believes. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe these guys are right. Maybe this is his best. But the other guys made more progress and they're just genetically superior or something like that. Which could be the case, but pff, personally, I don't believe it. I don't think so. It's not my opinion. But whatever you guys think, whatever your opinion is, you can tell me down below. Let's discuss this. And the last thing I wanted to talk about, and I may have been talking about this guy a little bit too much, but I don't know, I find him interesting, it's Ian Valier. So he talked about his reasons, why he didn't peak properly, why he failed, why he looked the way he looked, and the reason why that happened was the peaking protocol. These guys, him and Patrick Tour, I mean Patrick Tour told him to decrease the sodium that he was intaking and water, and I think... Uh, he was using diuretics and he was eating less food because he looked too full like two days out of a show and they tried to do radical stuff which never works with Ian. I don't know why they panicked 
why they didn't do just whatever they used to do before, whatever they did for Vancouver Pro, I think that was a really good look, but they, they tried something crazy, it backfired, it didn't look good, but as Ian said in his uh, explanation, he looked very good in the, in the morning of the show, on Friday morning, and we got an update, we got this photo he just posted, in which... His back does look a little bit better, it doesn't look crazy good like it used to look before in his, in his prep uh, photos and on Vancouver Pro stage, but it does look good, better than it looked on the Mr. Olympia stage. This was Friday morning, the morning of the pre-judging, so whatever went wrong, went wrong throughout the day, later in the day, they didn't peak properly, but as you can see right here, he looked pretty decent in that morning. However, he looked much better four weeks out. His conditioning was already in at this point. As you can see, his glutes were lean, lean. What else do you want? Maybe a little bit of dehydration, putting the tan on, getting a pump. And, you know, on that stage, under those lights on the stage, he would look amazing, I believe. And he believes that as well. He said that. So if he looked like this on the stage at about 270 something, 272 or 3, something like that, he would have been probably... The biggest bodybuilder on that stage, imagine that. Check this out, for example, as well. Wow, right? Wow, I mean, if he looked like this on stage, and this is like a month out, four weeks out. Look at this look at four weeks out. I mean, take a look at the legs, how dry, how lean they are, and everything else, how, how shredded this guy is, and how big and full and round and hard he was at one month out. If he showed up on that stage looking like this, his confidence would definitely have been much higher and he would look much better. He would arguably be the biggest guy on that stage, maybe not the most shredded guy, but one of the, if not the biggest guy. And if the judges liked that, then maybe he got up to like a first call out for, for a moment to try him out. Maybe his confidence would be boosted and he would have placed higher than he did, like maybe even 7th or 6th, maybe? Not 6th, probably. I don't see him beating Samson. Samson is just much more uh, genetically gifted. But Ian gets conditioned and he is massive. And when he doesn't make mistakes, he's a freak. He's a proper freak. So I think he would have placed higher. I think uh, the problem this year was his protocol, he said that, I mean, uh, he didn't peak properly, so that's it, if he did things differently, which I hope he's going to do next year, he would look just much better, and I would love to see that on Mr. Olympia stage, him at his absolute best, at his biggest, at his fullest, and at his, let's not say leanest, but when he's very, very lean, and has that crazy fullness and size, that would look amazing. And I'm looking forward to seeing that on a Mr. Olympia stage next year. But before that, we're going to see him do another show because he needs to qualify. And I'm curious uh, to see him prove to everybody that he does not have nerve damage or any kind of injury. That it's just a peaking mistake. And I think next time we see him on stage, he's going to look much, much better. Hopefully something like this. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you guys are watching this channel and you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe. It would really mean a lot to me because I'm trying to get to 50,000 subscribers. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. All the best and bye-bye.